Hey, welcome to the live stream. Just doing some paperwork here, getting some paperwork, uh, digital paperwork here, getting the screenshot ready of the new lesson today. Sorry, I'm just slammed with work. Okay, but I did get this done. So this is going to go there. I'm going to bring this over. Close. All right. Let's see. Make sure this is right. Yep. All right. So we just, I kept it simple today. I didn't want to go too crazy today. Um, so we've got it. We've just got two strings. Um, kind of will be, um, the great thing is you can go back either to other lessons and watch them again and read them again, or you can just download, um, let me put the, oh, I got to edit this. Sorry. I got to change the title 12 and then I've got to also, I need to monetize. Oh. Um, I think the back door just opened. Hold on a second. Who's here? Oh, and I also want to grab the URL for the Discord invite. So that's this copy. Paste, there's that. Um, I'm going to have to close this. Hey. I'm live. Nobody knows yet. <laughs> It's like, what? All right. So we've got some new notes. Oh, I didn't write the letter names. That's all right. It's simple enough. I'll do that. I'll do that. Uh, I'll do it later. Um, I, can, I can do it now. See, no one's expecting me to be on on Monday. So I haven't done Monday in a long time. Uh, we were at Wednesdays, and uh, let's see. Um, and now we are on Mondays. So uh, it's better because <laughs> I can actually talk to my gardener and pool guy who always show up while I'm doing the live stream. So let's see. I've got um, – so I'm going to reopen this, and I'll put in the I'll, – I'll add the letter names here. Um, so we have those, um, and then you can just print it up and A, B, C, B, um, and then down here when I get to the C sharp, it'll be flat, C sharp, and then I gotta put fret numbers in there. So I'll do that using the lyric tool. Zero, two, three, oops, three, two, one. How's everyone doing? Hey, hey, help me, how you doing? Where are you located? I gotta get rid of these. Sorry, I hate that when they do the edit lyric extensions. Don't I don't want lyric extensions. How do I turn that off? Okay. Now I need to go back and edit lyrics. Score. And lower them down a little bit. Okay, that should do it. Save. Print. PDF, save, replace. Sorry, I'll be I'll be ready to go in a second here. I'm I'm gonna I'm just doing a little fix on this. Okay, quit. Yes. Why didn't you ask me to save when I just hit save? It's the stupidest software. Okay. Now. Um, Go to airdrop. There you are. So I'm I'm 
I'm just adding some information on that chart you're looking at right now. So it's a little bit more, okay, open. So it's a little bit more uh, informative. All right, you'll see in a second what I'm talking about. Um, where is it? Why is it not opening? Oh, because I sent the wrong one. Never mind. <sighs> Gotta send the PDF. I sent the actual finale file. I don't have finale on my computer in my studio. See, that wouldn't have happened if I... Alright, now, open. Let's make it small and take a screenshot, and now you'll see what I'm talking about here. Yeah, okay. All right, don't need that. So how's everyone doing? I'm going to get rid of this. Remove. Yes. All right. Now, a little more information on here. Anytime I introduce a new node, I like to give you the fret and the name because I feel like that just, that's kind of standard actual practice in classical music, uh, who was it that posted um, the music of oh, the Orla uh, David Sillers? So he posted that music, uh, Orlando Sleep Sleepeth, which was um, is Dowland, John Dowland, which is great, like, Renaissance music, right? Was that, is that Renaissance? It's early. It's before Baroque. I think it's Renaissance, and uh, probably originally written for lute. Um, but the interesting thing about it was that uh, in the first phrase, the D note on the um, second string was played with three different fingers. The first time it was played with the second finger, the third time it was played with the third finger, the fourth time it was played with the fourth finger because of what happens afterwards. Um, and that's the thing about classical music, particularly that when they put the fingerings in there, um, it's always geared towards what's the most efficient thing to do. So, um, oh, I've got it. Hold on. Let me pin that link to the Discord that I posted. Okay. All right. Hey, Tony, what's going on? Oh, it's, oh, it's driving me out. Okay, so let's see. Now, um, so what, what I'm doing here is just the D string and the A string. So we're, I kept it pretty simple. Hey, Alan, what's going on? Um, I'm keeping it pretty simple. And uh, um, uh, let me... Hold on a second. I got to do... I'm, I was working literally up until the minute I went online. And I gotta work. I'll probably this is gonna be short because I've got to do a bunch of work. Hopefully this won't affect the sound. I gotta bounce some music here. Uh, can you still hear me? All right. Let's hope. Check one. Yeah, it's still there. All right. Um, I gotta get out the jazz box today. I, I did a new video. I haven't posted it yet. I haven't uploaded it even, but I've edited it. Um, I'm, I did a video on the chromatic scale. So uh, we're going to talk. Uh, we'll, we won't talk about that, but. Um, no, I think Alan Ward has been here before. I recognize Alan's name. 
Uh, Paul Meyer is is uh, lurking today. So we have a new string. We're almost done. We've got we're getting down to the fifth string and our first ledger lines. Okay, and ledger lines are those little lines that basically what they're doing is extending the staff. So if you had a staff like the staff is five lines, right? You could make a staff that was 500 lines, but you, good luck trying to figure out what note you're playing. Uh, even if you had a staff of 10 lines, it would be really hard to know when you're in the middle of that thing, what the heck's going on. So that's, you know, ledger lines may seem confusing at first, but they're far less con confusing than the alternative, which would be to have the staff continue down with lines. That would be bad. Um, thank you, Bruce, for all the... Um, the uh, paperwork you're doing here. And yeah, the PDF for this is at the Discord link that I pinned at the top of this uh, chat. Um, and you can join for free. Please try to use your, you can create m multiple handles on Discord. So just go ahead and you try to use your uh, YouTube handle if you can, if it's at all possible, uh, so that we know who you are. Unless you want to change both, then you can change both, whatever. But as long as they're the same, try to do that. Um, Tony, good to see you. But David posted a, uh, a, let's see, I downloaded that. Um, let me see, did I drag it into here? I did not. Let me see, where is that? Um, where did that go? Wow. I thought I downloaded it. Let me do it again. Maybe I deleted it. There it is. Okay. So the, the music that, he, uh, David uploaded. Let's see if it holds true to what I... It's a very simple little piece. Uh, oh, it starts with a pinky. That's what it is. Let's see. Yeah, it's a... So the fingering is meant to make it the most efficient possible. I'm sorry if you couldn't hear that, it wasn't very loud. Um, it, what I was going to point out is not there. See, like if you look at bar four, well, don't worry about it, but bar four, it has the same fingering twice. You don't, it doesn't need to do that. That's over, but most classical music will uh, give you a fingering, and if it, the next time that thing shows up, if it's the same, they shouldn't give you the fingering again. And that's kind of why on this, um, well, there's a couple of reasons why I don't write out the letter names all the way through this, because I don't want you reading the letter names, I want you reading the notes. I don't want you reading the fret numbers, I want you reading the notes. So that's why I don't write that. And I always suggest if you want to, you can print up a couple copies of the PDF that were uh, that I share with you. Uh, one copy you can mark up and take, you know, make it like a little quiz where you're guessing all the notes and all that. And you can even write the fingerings or whatever. And you can even refer to that. But ultimately, what you want to try to do is to re read the one with this, the, the fewest number of cheats, okay? I don't mind having the cheats at the top one time, and then you'll notice throughout the rest of the piece, every time there's an A, I don't write A above it. I don't put a zero below it. Um, every time there's a B, I don't write B above it and put a two below it. It's only the first time, except I did do it the second time on B. So I'm lying. I'm a liar. <laughs> Good to have you, Tony. Jack Lloyd is in the house, too. Okay, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to get a louder guitar. Um, let me swap out this with the Martin. All right. I have no idea what my tuning is. Hopefully I'm close. Okay, so, so we're on the A string today. A, A, I can sing A. G, G, F, F. When I first wake up, I can usually get that F. It's amazing anybody can sing those those uh, Russian basses. Can sing really low. Oh, I'm gonna shoot. I gotta close the Discord because it's gonna keep beeping. All right. Oh, I gotta drag some music. Hold on. We're, okay. 
I'm okay with that. All right. Sam Stamos is here. How you doing? Oh. Okay. Monday works. Okay. Good. 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 I'm glad. I'm, so not today so much. I get it. Yeah. And then there may be times where Monday's a holiday and we'll have a lot of people on um, or nobody because I'm not going to be here. <laughs> Generally, I don't go away on the weekends, so because I'm always playing at church. So if I take off, I usually take off during the week. I feel like there's less competition for hotel rooms and such. All right, so let's uh, let's just look at the three notes, the three new notes that we have, and then we'll review the other. The um, actually, I'm going to show you five new notes ultimately, but we're only going to tack touch those at the very end, uh, touch on those at the very end. So, and the. Double bar lines have no reference in reality. Well, they, I guess you could, yeah. I mean, I don't. I didn't really think about the double bar lines uh, on these on this one. I should have, but I didn't. So, um, but they kind of work. You look at them, they kind of work. Um, so we have A is open fifth string, and that's on two. That's on the ledger line on top of the ledger line, or on the. How do I say that? The ledger line's going through it, <laughs> two of them. So there's two ledger lines, and that's A, okay? Now, when we get to E, we're actually going to have to have, we're going to be have three ledger lines, and it's going to be below the third ledger line. So that's as far as we're probably going to go with low ledger lines. Um, sometimes when I'm doing drop D, I have to, I have to rec learn to recognize that next one down. But, but other than that, I rarely ever read ledger lines below the E. Um, okay. Um, so that's A. Below the second ledger line is B, which is the second fret right here. That's B. A to B is a whole step, so that's why we have two frets. Okay. And then third fret is C, and that's on the on the first ledger line. And that technically in music notation that would be middle C, but sonically we're written actually an octave above where we are. So this is actually middle C. We learned it second week we started doing <coughs> reading. So. That's technically on guitar middle C, but this is written middle C. And then we go back to B, and that's the first line right there, okay? Let's go ahead and go down to the bottom of the page, bar 37, and we can see B flat. Makes sense. B is here. If you flat a note, you go down a fret, okay? If you sharp a note, like here's C, if we sharp C, it's going to be there. So that's all the notes on the A string in the, in the first position. Okay, so we have A, which is on, written on the second ledger line. B with our second finger, which is below the first ledger line. C, which is with our third finger, which is on the first ledger line. Um, and we go to B flat. You can see B down there at the bottom page, bar 37. You see that B flat. That's um, written below the first ledger line with a flat sign. So you can see that. And then C sharp. But we're only going to go with those at the end. I'm not going to, I wouldn't stress too much about those. Um, and oftentimes when you have flats and stuff like that, usually you, you may not even see what we call accidentals, which is what the, that flat is called an accidental. And so is that sharp because they're changing the key or they're changing the, the quality of the note in the key. The key technically here, even though, or I should say here, <laughs> sorry, on my screen it's over here, so it's confusing. Um, but the key technically we're in here is C because there's no sharps of flats. Um, so if we have a flat, we have to notate it, and it, that's, that flat sign is called an accidental. And it's only good to the end of the bar. Um, if you'll notice, the next bar, bar 38, also has a B in it, but it's not a B flat anymore. That B flat goes away after. But those, first, those two notes in, in 37, it's A, A, B flat, B flat, and then B, B, C, C. I, if you read that bar 38, or 37, 38, it's just, basically, it's just that. Uh, so the way you would read that is A, A, B flat, B flat, B natural, B natural, and C, C. Okay, you don't need to see B, B natural, but oh, if if I wanted that second B flat to be a B natural, I would have to write a little natural sign in front of it. So 25, that's pretty good for a first time on a Monday in a while. That's awesome. I, I think Monday is going to be a better day, to be honest. Also, 
All Son. Who is that? Okay. Um, anyway, the um, so that's just a little lesson in um, accidentals, and we're not we're not really going to touch on that until we get to the bottom of the page. So, I, like I said again, I kept this fairly simple, uh, mainly because we're learning new ledger lines. Mainly because I feel like I've been going kind of fast, um, and if you you've got what is this? We've got 12 pages now of music. We've almost got a book. Uh, we're going to get to this E string and then we're going to, then I got to figure out what we're going to do. You know, then we're going to start mixing it up. Um, and then I'm probably going to start, we're going to, I'm going to get back to that kind of zone where I'm writing pieces like I was when we did bluegrass. Um, but it won't be anything that difficult, mm -hmm. but you can always pull up the bluegrass stuff because remember I wrote it in tab and music, right? So how far back was that? Did I actually have any of this? There's one of the songs. Oh, Down in the Valley of Prey. Okay, that was a cover. Where are the originals? Um, wow, we've learned so much stuff. I don't see any originals here. Down in the Valley of Prey. But you can... You could practice reading this. Now, we haven't gotten to eighth notes yet. That's something we will be touching on soon. And dotted notes, too. We haven't talked about dotted notes, really. Um, but you can start to practice reading those. Those are all notes you know. Every one of those notes you already know. Uh, all of these notes you know. The old, well, except the A on top there. The, the A the, uh, on the ledger line on the top. You don't know that one. Um, what is that? Oh, Grooves is us. I don't remember what this was. Oh, that was Amazing Grace. Okay. So we've we've done so much. Here we are today. I should probably put dates on these. You guys are all having a conversation. Okay. So let's just do um, the first... Uh, let's, okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to read the first 12 measures and then loop it. All right. Um, I'm even going to put a metronome on because I think we, I think you should be able to keep up. We only have three notes, and they're not mix. I don't, I didn't really mix them up until the next phrase. So where are they? Hey, is my metronome? There we go. I'm putting it. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'll put it at 75. Two, three, four. Two, three, four B. Two, three, four C. Two, three, four B. Two, three, four. Two, four. Oh, that's awesome, AJ. Yep. I had students that had entire notebooks filled with lessons. Four. And then next. Two, three, four. B, two. that pinky out if you can. Now quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Two. Just like you're drinking high tea in England. Keep that pinky out. Even though you're not using it. Back to the top. A. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. B. Two. Second line. Four. A, two. Hey, Ricky. Hey, I was just thinking about London. Actually, my London friends are here in LA right now, so. Four. Two, A, four. And then one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. The weather is gorgeous here. One. We're going to go to the top again one more time. A, we're just going to try to hammer it now. Try not to look at the letter names there. Look at the notes. Look at that C note there. Technically middle C. 
four, and it's on paper anyway. Three, four, two ledger lines is A. A, under the first ledger line is B. On the first ledger line is C. Two, four, B. Two, A. And then quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. David Sillers likes, loves. Okay, here we go, we're done. Reginald, that has nothing to do with learning how to read guitar, but interesting. Okay, now at 13, let's see, I think we will just repeat 13 to 16. Okay, all I'm doing there is kind of mixing it up a little bit, not too much, but um, <laughs> is, it, is it rainy there, Ricky, in London? You know, we were in London, and it didn't rain at all. I may be in London, eh, I'd like to go this year, but probably going to be next year. Um. But, um. <laughs> John, sorry. Yes, it is already up there, John. I put it up. Um, when did I put that up? Anybody remember? Was that Friday night or Saturday? Yeah, I think it may have been Saturday night I did it. Um, okay, so bar 13 is 14, 15, 16. It's just, we're just doing those three notes. Tonight. I'm trying to kind of mix them up a little bit. The next line down, I kind of add some half notes in there. The next line down, I add in the D string. So bar 21 is the first time we're going to see the D string. And just to remember, remind you, the D string, if we go to bar 21, the last note in bar 21 is the D, right? It's below the open string, okay? I mean, below below the staff, all right? And then uh, the second finger is on the second fret. That's E, and that's the bottom line of the staff. People sometimes would learn the, the staff by E. Uh, every good boy does fine, E, G, B, D, F, um, and then F, A, C, E, the word face is the spaces, and there's our F right there, and that's on the sixth. So those are, we're going to, you might have to turn your brain packs on again to to, to, to go over the, the D string. Note. Oh, you're new. Okay, Ricky, well, awesome. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> John forgot we're changing the Mondays. Oh, Mondays work for you, John. I just have to move some dental patients around, right? <laughs> hey, I, John, I got to get a crown. You're a dentist, right? I think that's, I think that's, if I remember correctly, you're a dentist. I don't know why I think that, but I'm pretty sure we saw you from your office when we did the, um, when we did the, we need to do another one of those. Holly, let's talk and we'll do, we'll set up another one of those um, uh, meet and greet things. I meant to do a, a thing yesterday with Alex. We just got sidetracked, and I, I ended up working on Father's Day. So the kids are all having fun out in the barbecue and all this stuff, and I'm, I'm in the studio tracking, and it's fine. And they know I'm happy when I'm working. So that, you know, like, what would make Dad the happiest on Father's Day is, like, a gig. That would make me the happiest, just so you know. Yeah, I just moved to Mondays. I was doing seven days a week when COVID first dropped. And they did the lockdowns. That was crazy. I did 62 days in a row, I think. And then I went to three days a week, and then I dropped to one day a week. And now I moved it from Wednesday to Monday. So, um, okay. So let's do 13, and we're going to loop this. 13, 14, 15, 16. So just that that one stave right there, okay? It's, it's just A, B, and C. That's all we've got, okay? I'm going to go ahead and do this. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. Probably memorize it before you get good at reading this. Okay, now let's do them each as half notes. Two, four, two, four, two. If it's too hard quarter notes, you can go to half notes. Four, two, 
four, C, or B, sorry, A, B twice, two, A, C. All right? Now, we, if it's really, if that's too hard, you can go to whole notes. So you can do four counts per note. Just because I wrote quarter notes doesn't mean you have to read them as that. That's, you, you've got you've to learn it, and if you're making too many mistakes, you need to slow everything down. And one way to slow it down is to slow down the metronome, but another way to slow it down is just to count everything as double or quadruple. Uh, I wouldn't do triple. I would do double or quadruple. Um, that's more common. So, oh, take, off, take care. Help me. Okay. By the way, you don't use anesthetic. That's funny. Uh, yeah, let's see. My dentist... Uh, you know, I, I did I tell you the story about not using... I had a, a, a cavity drilled without anesthetic. I actually asked to not have anesthetic. I'll tell you. To remind me if you're around at the end. Um, and I won't be able to go very long today because i got to get back to work. But we'll get through this and then we'll tell a little story and then we'll go. Uh, right now, I'm on measure 13. So we're going to count, I don't know if you hear that metronome, like Chinese water to torture, right? Two, three, four, one. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to play each one of those notes for four beats. All right? Two, sorry, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, and B. Two, three, and you could do this if you're having trouble reading it gives you a chance to like really look at the note and then look ahead practice looking ahead and it also helps you keep track of counting groups of four two three four two three four then b now we're in bar 15 now again c twice maybe try to keep that pinky out if you can b a and the reason to keep the pinky out is just to get in the habit of keeping it available. See, if you tuck it away, it's you're not going to be able to pull it out when you need it. Fast. C4, and then, and then there. So we're not really going to use the pinky until we get to the C sharp at the bottom of the page. Okay, so that was 13 through 16. Let's do 17 uh, through 20. Um, and I'm just going to play it right now in time uh, with uh, at 75. Uh, as written, okay? Here's what it sounds like. One, two, three, play along if you want. I'm repeating it, 17, 18, two. Okay, so now this one becomes a little bit more difficult if we're going to slow it down. Uh, if I double the value of everything, remember that means those half notes are going to become whole notes. So they're going to be four counts. Let me try doing that right now. I'm going to slow it down so that every, every quarter note gets two beats and every half note gets four beats. Okay, so it's, it might actually end up being more confusing than just slowing down the metronome and playing at a slower tempo. But let's try this. Uh, we're at bar 17. One, oops, one. Two, three, four, A, two, C, four. Two, three, four, C, two, three, four, A, B, A, C, A, two, three, four, C, two. One, two. That's where it gets a little weird because <laughs> you got to. you can just practice reading the notes without uh, regard to the to the rhythm or the time of it okay you can just read you can just read through like that okay okay yeah and and um, uh, now all these exercises are on focus on the first because yes yes however um, if this is too easy for you, it's like, oh, Tom, this is baby reading. Um, you can always practice like the A here. Now, the E string, we're not going to really be able to play anywhere but here. But the A string, or the A note, A, B, C, those can play here. So if you want to practice reading 
uh, that that uh, bar seventeen would be up here. Let's see. Um, okay, where are we at? We are, okay, now we're going to bring in the D string. Um, and um, I, 21 through 28 would be fine. Yeah, that's no, John, that's a good idea. A metronome is it's always good to practice with a metronome. Um, a lot of times, like I said, I always like to practice with kind of a, either more of a drum pattern. You can pull up, I can pull up a drum loop. If you have a Mac computer, uh, it comes with GarageBand, so you could just insert, type in any tempo you want. The, the, the tempo's at the top. You just double click in there, or you can, I think you can just click and hold and drag down or drag up, and it's, it'll default at probably 120, which of course is two beats every second. Um, but uh, you can set it to any tempo you want, and then you can just go and find the drum groove you want. You click on the loop. Uh, the loop logo may be an infinity symbol, I think. If you click on that, it shows you a whole list of loops, and you can click drums, and it'll have drum loops. And You can play in any style you want. You can practice it. And it, it's just a little bit more realistic. Um, although, to be honest, we have a click in our ears at church, uh, but we're also I also have everybody else in my ears. So... It's everybody playing to the click, but we're all playing together. So, um, yeah, so I, John, I, I guess I have to get, uh, I mean, I'm not having any problem with the tooth, but apparently I've got a couple old fillings uh, on a tooth and I need to get a crown. Um, so, and then there's a cavity or there's a thing that they want to go ahead and clean up that's kind of behind, that's on the side of a tooth. Once they pull out the, the old fillings, uh, they'll be able to get to, and then they can put a crown on. So, I don't know. I think they told me $1,600. So I'm like, okay. I just hate spending money on that. I'm sorry, John. Everybody hates spending money on dentists. <laughs> I don't mind spending money on cleanings. I like getting my teeth clean. Um, and I don't chew ice. I don't grind my teeth really anymore. I've never ground my teeth. I just clinch. Um use any specific single form example uh, a, a caged form to locate these notes at other non for yes oftentimes I do um, also it's just a pure thing of memorizing also the thing is when I'm reading a lot of times I'm not reading the notes I'm reading the intervals uh, particularly like for example I was just doing where is it here <laughs> uh, let's see where was this so I was just doing some real uh, where is it? Where's the simple page? Where's the simple page? Oh, here it is. Oh, the composer's texting me. Hold on a second. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, ah, fly. Why was there a fly in the house? Uh-oh. Is there a door open? That's unusual at a fly in the house. Okay, so, let's see. Um, hold on a second, me. Uh, oh, good, the next one's in 7-4. Okay, so here's, here's what I was reading, but this... This was, you can see, and it's in bass clef. <laughs> and then I was reading on baritone. So instead of actually reading, that fly is coming literally right on my face. Hold on a second. Let me see. Let me make sure the door's not open. I got an Amish fly swallow. I 
got my, this is an Amish fly swatter <laughs> made by the Amish. There's no zippers on it anywhere to be found. Um, but I was playing that on baritone and instead of reading the notes so much, I was more reading the intervals. Uh, just easier to think about because bass clef, not my main clef. And then I, so I, if you start, if you lack concentration for one second, you'll forget you're in bass clef. Um, and then I'm playing on Berto, which means I have to transpose. So to think bass clef and transpose is pretty tough. Um, it's not, it was a small enough little thing. I mean, it wasn't like this. See, this is crazy. And then this is crazy too. But this is one where I'm not playing those chords. I'm picking one note out and playing it on an instrument or something like that. I'm noticing, I'm looking for harmonic shifts. Um, and so when I'm reading music, a lot of times it's not to play everything per note because it's it's like a takedown of score. This is like the whole orchestra right here. This is everything that the orchestra's doing. So, um, okay, so. <clears throat> So I need, um, yeah, everybody take a sip because I left the room. Oh, there was the floor right there on my coffee cup. That's not cool. Why is he such a pest? I guess that's what he does. Okay, so where were we? Uh, 17, okay, 21. A lot of this is going to be stuff you can practice more probably easily on your own at your tempo. Yeah, the interval thing is um, kind of a natural byproduct of reading, I think. I think almost everyone who uh, is a good reader almost is, it's like I said, it's, it's almost like reading phonics. You're reading through something rather than reading each note individually. You know, B, A, C, B, A, whatever. You know, it's like, oh, whole, whole step, half step down, whole step, half step, whole step, blah, blah, blah. You know, major third, minor third, perfect fourth, fifth. Uh, it's it's more like reading through sentences, reading through words, things like that. So uh, it makes almost makes it more musical to visualize the intervals. But I don't really, no one ever really teaches that. I think it's just a natural offshoot of getting good at reading. Um, speaking of, let's get to 21. I'm just going to play... Uh, I'm going to go well, probably slower than 20, 75, so I'm just going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 21. I'm just going up these two strings. Vulgar Boatman. <laughs> uh, so you can play Volga Boatman with uh, all the notes on the A string and the D string, I think. I think the whole song could be played on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, even just in that little bit there, I was really more looking at reading the intervals and going, oh, I got to go up a you know, fourth or whatever, and less reading the notes themselves. Uh, you can try that. You can practice that. But that's a kind of weird thing. The other thing is it's, it's probably a byproduct of doing solfage, sight singing. Because remember, in sight singing, you you've got to you just got to hear the note. You can't play it. You've got to hear it. So you're like, well, what? So when I go from uh, where was it? There was a fourth. Oh, the A to the D. You hear the wedding march in there or whatever. That's the fly right there. Didn't get it. Man, he is. He is very, look at that, right in my face. <laughs> I got my fly swatter, but he's not sitting down anywhere. I gotta get, come on, man. I'm afraid he's going to fly my mouth. I don't know what you're saying here, Elevanda de Sousa Silva. It's so weird. I'm, is it my hair thing? Come on, man. Land somewhere where I can kill you. Yeah. 
Dang it. Funny if he lands on the keyboard. Come on. I gotcha. <laughs> this is exciting television right here. All right. Oh, dang. He lands on the fly swatter. How do I kill him if he's on the fly swatter? Dang. All right. Okay, back to work, John. Sorry. Um, so anyway, so 21 to uh, 28. Again, one, two, three, four, eight. He's literally flying in my face and on my, so it must be my hair gel that he likes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hey Jose, good to see you. We're um come on man, land. Oh you landed, but you landed where I can't get you. Come on. Ah missed it. Dang it. <laughs> I never get flies in the house. Something happened. Somebody left the door open or something. Um, okay. So I can double the value of all these. Oh, dude, land somewhere where I can get you. Um, I can double the value of all these. And uh, let's see, at 21. So we could do whole notes. Let me get the foot pedal. Footrest under my finger. Okay, so at bar 21, I can do, I can double the values of these are all whole notes because it's nothing but quarter notes, so it's pretty easy to do this. See, we don't have any mixed in uh, half notes or anything like that, so it doesn't get too weird. Um, so, yeah, he, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I sleep with my eyes open too. Patience, fly. Wait until I'm asleep. Okay, one, two. So I'm going to double the value of each of these notes. Three, four. A, two, B, C, D, E, F, E, D, B, C, A, C, D, E, uh, sorry, F, E, next line down, four, two A's, and to D, you can sing along too. Actually, if you want to practice your sight singing, you can be productive. You can try to be predictive with your vocals, with your singing. There's so many things you could do if this is really simple for you. If this is very beginner, I wouldn't add any of those things. I would just try to keep it real, real simple. You could even do four beats per note to, thank you, Bruce, for taking care of all that. Two, three, four. See, I'm, I'm multiplying the value of each of those notes by four, two, three. So instead of quarter notes, they're whole notes. Two, bar 22. Two, three, four. That gives you plenty of time to figure out the next note. Open D, down to B at the second fret of the A string. Two, three, C, two, three, A, two, three, B, two, three, C, two, three, four, two, F, it's the third fret, E at the second fret, back down to the A string, C, two, three, four, two, three, four, A, two. Yeah, there's so many things you could do to in 
improve your, if this is easy, too easy for you. I know I have a lot of subscribers that are beginners. Majority of my subscribers are beginners, but many of them, the old guard, are players that are trying to become professionals. And uh, I'm trying to give them as many tips as I can how to do that. Two, three, four. Open A, two, three, four. Two, three, last line here, or last bar, and then D. Four, two, three, four. Okay. All right, now I got some dyads we're gonna do. Um, and uh, basically I'm just doing a couple different ones. I'm doing kind of A and the open A and the E and the open F. I love that. kind of a cool sound, you know. Right? Wow, that fly is <laughs> just trying to fly in my ear and everything. What is the deal with you? We're going to be done here in a minute because i got to get back to work. i got to kill this fly though first. That is pretty aggressive. Normally a fly will just kind of hang out where the light is or I've got a wrapper that had food in it. I'm like, why are you not hanging out there? See, it just was on my forehead. Okay. Maybe he's playing with me. He's just like, it's like a puppy dog. It wants to play. Come on, let's play. Come on. What are you waiting for? Let's do something. It's like, yeah, no. Uh, what did Jose say? Uh, oh, your father was a tremendous guitar player. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, that was part of the reason why I started doing the YouTube channel was because when my dad died, um, everything he knew about baseball and jazz, which was volumes, uh, immediately disappeared. There's a, a saying, uh, an old Indian saying that is, uh, and uh, by India, I mean in the country India. Um, what, how would you say that then? Indian, it makes it sound like I'm talking about Native American. But anyway, there's an Indian saying that when a man dies... Or woman, but when a when a man dies, a library burns to the ground, and that's really true. All of that, you know, the knowledge of baseball and, and jazz, and the family history that he knew, um, and he remembered a lot more than my mom ever did. Um, that all disappeared, and so part of the reason I started doing the live, not the live stream so much, but part of the reason I started doing YouTube in the first place was because when my dad died, ten almost exactly ten years ago. Um, I had, that was right around the time I stopped teaching private lessons and I had taught private lessons for 35 years and I decided, you know what, I should probably just start throwing those lessons up. Everything I taught, the modes, lessons and things like that, uh, the pentatonic lessons, all that stuff. I wanted to start throwing up onto, um, uh, onto, um, YouTube so that it, it could outlive me so, Supposedly, you know, we'll see. Um, and, uh, well, I mean, I, I'm not going to live forever. My assumption is that 50 years from now, YouTube or some variation of it will still be around. And my videos will still be up there for people to learn from. Uh, whether, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But um, so that that's kind of why I started doing the YouTube thing was to just to kind of get that. Because I stopped teaching privately and I'm not teaching songs. I don't teach songs. But that pedagogy, that style that I have of teaching that I developed over 35 years from the age of 15 to the age of 50, I decided to uh, to try to put that up in the best way you know I can. I'm not like super graphic guy. I don't have the best cameras. Uh, this is just my iMac camera. Uh, but that's that's kind of the story behind that. Okay, so let's look at this bar 80, uh, 29. I have an A, and I have the B, uh, the E. Okay, so A, E, and an A and E together. Technically, that you could call that a power chord. Also, you call that an A5 chord or an A power chord. It used to be back in the day we'd write A and then in parentheses PC for power chord. It was like way more cumbersome than writing A5. Okay? And then I go A and F and I hit A and F together. Like that. You see that? And then what I did was I go back and forth here. This is kind of cool. Beautiful. 
I love that sound. Very, very, very uh, minor. Very minor sound. Okay. The interesting thing about it, it has almost the exact opposite sound if I put a C in the bass. So we're going to have C, the next line down, bar 33, and we have E, and then C and E together is the bottom two notes of the C chord, right? I play C and then F with the pinky, I'm using pinky here, and play them together. I get an F chord with a C in the bass, or you can think of it as kind of a C sus 4, or just call it a C sus. Okay. Oh, what did AJ say? Breaking news. Tom? Burns down now is trying to kill a fly. Yeah, right? News at 11. Film at 11. Okay, and then back and forth. Isn't that cool? Sound of that. Um, so uh, yeah, and my son is a good, a very, very good guitar player. My nephew's a very, very good guitar player. He didn't start playing until much later, and he was kind of inspired by my son, his cousin, um, by my son, his cousin, um, and he was like, oh, I, I want to play guitar. So he actually, his first guitar was one of Alex's old guitars. We shipped it out to Connecticut, and he had it, and then he started taking lessons. The next thing you know, he's going to Berkeley. Now he's Teaching and uh, in fact, if you need a teacher, uh, a, a Zoom teacher, he can do that. Uh, his name is Tony Tibbetts. Um, I let me know. Uh, another great lesson, really, Catherine. <laughs> Mainly because I didn't get really close to the screen and freak you out. That's really what you're saying. It's a good lesson. Okay, now here we're gonna uh, the bar thirty seven is uh, A A, and then we're gonna do the B flat, the first fret two times, then the B, natural C, remember, that flat sign only lasted the end of the bar, so bar 38, we're back to B natural, and then C, and then C sharp, and then open D, and then I don't do E flats, I go F, back down to E, down bottom line, D, sorry, I kind of cut off there a little bit, and C sharp, dang, that fly is annoying. And then C, and then B, and then B flat. So this is very easy. I just wanted you to be able to start to see some of these accidentals and read them and not be afraid, afraid of them. Also, I really wanted to hammer home this, this ledger line reading that's new to us today because of the A string. Okay, so this, I feel like this lesson's fairly beginner, or very fairly easy, uh, especially compared to some of the lessons I think we've already had on this subject. Um, so I'm going to try to kind of keep it so it's not too ridiculous, but like I said, you can always just take practice one bar or two bars or four bar phrase chunks and do them over and over again. The, the downside of that is you'll probably memorize it long before you'll actually be able to read it. Okay. Bye, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, Aslan, I didn't see that. <laughs> I should probably put the coffee cup here in view so that you can, like right here, so that you can tell me if the fly lands on it. Okay. So um, let's do that. I'm going to do that again. Okay. We're going to go A, then to B flat twice with the first finger, second finger on B, natural, C twice. Get your picky, see my picky's ready to go there. C sharp. Now open D. We go second fret to E. F. Back down to E at the bottom line there. R41. Open D. C sharp. Reach on that. Get that with the picky. C natural. B twice. And then B flat twice. And then A. Very a, a minor sound because of it. <laughs> 
that blues note in there. All right. So I think you got, this is good. This is a good one to practice to work on. Uh, next week, I'm going to teach you the E string. And then we will have all six strings. Um, and then we'll, all six strings. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. Uh, that just means everything. All in. All six. It's probably some Italian thing. So we got any Italians out there today? Some Italian thing. Uh, we used to have an Italian. Remember uh, PB, the bass player? Uh, he was in Italy. He's still, I, he just posted yesterday on Facebook. I mean, on Instagram a couple times. So I saw those. All right. So um, let me just see if some music is up. Not yet. Okay, good. That's weird. What's copy chart? Huh. All right. Um, the uh, yeah. So I was going to tell you about the time I got didn't get Novocaine. Um, not, not a big deal. It was just that I <laughs> totally forgot that I had a, a dental appointment, and um, I was, you know, for the for the um, filling, I think they'd scheduled about a 45 minute thing. And I, I lived about 20 minutes away from the, from the doctor's office. And when I didn't show up at the top of the hour, they, uh, they called me and said, Hey, where, you know, are you on your way? And I was like, Oh shoot. So I had two cavities that they were filling. Um, and, I got there and, you know, they had people after me. So it was either just reschedule or I said, you know what, let's not worry about the Novocaine because that'll take two, because you do the Novocaine, you have to wait until it takes effect and then you start to do the work. And um, so I just said, don't worry about the Novocaine, let's just do it without it. And they said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so to this day, I can still hear the drill. <laughs> Yeah, it, you, I, you, I definitely felt it more than I normally would. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, but it wasn't, I didn't need a reminder. Uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, so, you know, I just kind of grabbed on and I didn't, I don't think I teared up at all. Um, but yeah, so I'm not sure how, how involved the crown thing is going to be. <clears throat> I don't know, they're not going to put me under. They don't do that kind of thing at, at my dentist's office. So it'll just be, a, a, you know, Novocaine and amazing and very interesting i don't know how amazing that is <laughs> but i did get you know was, i felt bad because i didn't want to come back i felt bad that i blew i totally forgot my appointment and it was the only way to be able to get done what i needed to get done and um uh, and not waste their time so it worked out <laughs> so uh, oh let's see um let's see Quick, close the screen. Oh, no, it's closed. Everything's, the castle's closed up. I think I heard the screen open earlier, though. I think Beth was working in the yard. The screen went, you know, made a noise. And I heard it when I first logged in. And um, she must have been outside for a while, not knowing that the, it was open. So I'm going to get him. I don't know where he is now, but I don't know. Is there something I can catch? It? Put a little honey on a piece of cardboard and then. You'll just go right to it. But then I don't want to get honey on my uh, fly swatter. My, or, this is a, it's got lots of dust on it. It's not spider webs. Um, this is a, uh, it was made by um, the Amish. Isn't that pretty cool? It was kind of expensive, but I thought it was cool. So I said, if I'm going to get a fly swatter, I might as well get an Amish one. So yeah, it, yeah, David or Daniel, it worked out. I, I got my filling filled. It may be the one I've got to get taken out now with to get the crown in, but I'm not looking forward to that. I'll probably schedule. Well, I'll probably schedule it in July. I'm not having any issues. I don't even feel sensitivity or anything like that. But they say it's if it if it breaks, then I might need to get a a uh, uh, what's that called when they go in the root canal. I don't want to get a root canal. But I don't have to. Um, it's a masterpiece. Uh, so let's see. Um, so we've done quite a bit here. If we go back, and I'm, I'm, I've got work to do. Like I said, oh, it's interesting. I made it. I've 
my window was smaller back then. Uh, so here's the first lesson we did with with uh, reading. You know, it's funny because I'm calling it reading basics, but we're really doing some pretty kind of advanced stuff. I mean, I look at what was it? Was it last week's? We did. Well, the first page was had like this is pretty intense here. You can go back to any of these lessons, and if you're new, um, at the very top of the chat, you see my pinned Discord link up there. If you click on that, um, and I think if you right-click on it, you can get a um, separate window. You don't want to click on it, it'll leave the live stream. So if you right-click on it, you can join the Discord, and if you join Discord, you'll see all of my PDFs, all of my lessons, I mean, I've been, we've been doing these, I mean, I go all the way back here, boom, look at, look at this stuff. We've got, and this is, this is just when I got OBS. So all of that stuff is available. All of those JPEGs or pings or PDFs are all available at Tom, the, um, uh, the Tom's PDF and lessons or lessons and PDFs or whatever. Yeah. Hit the like button. That kind of helps me out a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think of what's the, um, my, I haven't been really paying attention to my YouTube. I, I do get paid on the 21st, I think, is when they pay me. Um, I haven't really been paying. Well, so I'm up to 94,376 subscribers. So I'm almost to 95,000. I can't wait to get to 100 because then I do get the plaque. Um, let's see, analytic-wise, well, we're live, so that kind of skews things. But... About 6,000 views every 48 hours, which isn't bad. But, it, I, you know, for a long time, I was I, it would average 15,000. So that was when I was making serious, some, some real money. Uh, my most popular video still is 7 Tips for Older Beginners. And then play most any song in Dad Get. Then the Bluegrass Jam. Now, I did a newer Bluegrass Jam. I don't think it's, I don't even think I'm up to 1,000 yet. No, 549. So it hasn't. It hasn't taken off yet. Um, and that one's cool because it's full of all sorts of information. Hey, Buzz Fret, what's going on? Will you be showing how to read music all the way up to the 12th fret? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, uh, we are just, today was the first time we got ledger lines. So if I were to go all the way up to the 12th fret on the E string, um, we would have quite a few ledger lines. We would have three... So you would be on the third ledger line to get to that E. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> we definitely, the thing about it is, is I you could do it yourself by taking the very first lesson we did, this one here, okay? And instead of reading it on the, and I may do this, I may go back and, hey, we're going to learn this and we're going to read at the in the fourth position. But the other thing is, you, you don't, or fifth position, we don't have, you know, the thing is, I could read this in the third position because I have a G here, I have an E. You know, I could play two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. See that? And it has a completely different fingering. See, if I do this, it feels kind of, kind of like this. Or you, it kind of feels like that. Uh, but but a lot of times you, you're not going to play it like that. You may, you may Your hand might be in the position to play those notes this way or this way. Anyway, uh, so um, so you can kind of school yourself on that, but I may obviously we're going to have to start going there because um, I'm going to run I'm out I'm done I'm, I'm going to run out of notes after next week because I'm going to hit the low E string and we'll pretty much have everything. So uh, I'll start going up the up the high E string and start learning those notes, um, and then. Um, as far as reading up the neck, yeah, it's it's interesting because guitar is that way, violin's that way too. As any stringed instrument's going to be that way, where you have multiple places to play the same note. Uh, so a lot of times, it's the it's up to the player to determine where he's going to read it. And if you if I'm really in a bind, I will use open strings. But generally, when I'm reading for a session. Um, this is a very good example. Well, let's see. Uh, 
I mean, this, this I'm not really reading all those notes. I'm reading the harmonies and playing the chords. Um, same thing with this. But when I'm reading a session, I, you know, I, I rarely play open strings. Uh, just because the timbre of an open string sounds different than a fretted string. So you really don't want to be playing a line and then have one note kind of jump out because it sounds different. That's true whether you're playing like a really high gain heavy metal kind of thing or a jazz thing or even a classical thing. Um, with classical music, a lot of times what somebody's done is they've come along, like Andre Segovia did this a million times. He came along and he um, fingered the song the best possible way, the most efficient way, or he did the arrangement. He did a lot of Bach pieces that, you know, someone came along and there's a, there's a lot of great arrangers of Bach music for guitar because Bach didn't really write for guitar. So um, there are guys that came along and did arrangements for guitar for Bach and, you know, it's like, well, I could play it down here, but they're saying playing it here. Why is that? And it may be because of the tone. The tone is very different on different parts of the neck. You know, this E here is kind of kind of not very pretty. And you can't do anything with it. But this is a little prettier, and I can put a little vibrato on it. See? This one's even shorter, and the string is thicker. This is even shorter, and the string is even thicker. So as I go up the, I got all these different timbres or tones that I can that I can choose from. That's the beauty of guitar. So if I really want, you know, if I want that sound, there it is. If I want. See, I can't do that with an open string. I can't slide into that E there, so. So, so playing up the neck and reading and interpreting things up the neck are a good thing. So what I might do is we might go back and, um, oh, no worries, Tony, join us anytime. And you can always watch these later, okay? Oh, Gloria, hey. <laughs> Buzz, yeah, my friend's buzzing too, aren't they? Um, but what we may do is go back once we get to the E string and I'm looking for new stuff to do. Um, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to like create some lesson after like in two weeks of all the notes because I think that's just daunting. I, I, I mean, really, very rarely do I, I get a piece of music that plays everything from low E to the, to the G and all the notes in between. So, but I might try to create some things that we might actually revisit and look at some of the bluegrass things. The other thing is I need to start teaching you how to read eighth notes. They're not, I don't, I want to find a good way to make it so it's not so confusing. We might do something where we're just reading one note, an open D string or something like that, or an open G string. Uh, just for the junior hires in the, in the, in the room, I'll probably go, let's play, play your G string. <laughs> The whole lesson is on the G string. Everybody's be laughing. So, um, so we may do that if we want to start learning to play some eighth notes and things like that. I may do a lesson just of, of those kind of things, um, and because I know there are a lot of you that want to learn how to read rhythm as well. And that, in fact, to be honest, I could write it with rhythmic notation, and not even use note notation because oftentimes when you're reading, you get given a chart, and it's like, oh, you're the guitar player. Here's your chart. It may not be notes, it may be slashes and rhythms like <laughs> might be something like that. And it's like, well, how do I read, you know, how does that how do I notate that? How do I read it? The other thing speaking of, the other thing you can do is try to start writing music. Print up some uh, that web page uh, that I use all the time. Oh, I hit him, but I didn't. I didn't catch him. Um, let's see, where is it? Let me let me send you the link to this again. Staffpaper.com. It's a great or not? It's not staffpaper.com. It's blanksheetmusic.net. So been here forever, um, and it's a great resource for printing up sheet music. So if you want to print up sheet music or tab that you can do all sorts of stuff with, um, that is a great resource. And if you want you want to get better at reading, try writing out music. Try writing out stuff. Make, you know, take the lessons that I've taught you and then go, okay, now I'm going to create a random thing that practice, that ha helps me practice the D string and the B string. You could totally do that. Work on D string and B string. Now, <clears throat> again, 
if I were to read something, oftentimes I'm not going to play it with open strings. I'm going to play it up the neck. So it is very valuable. Uh, I think Buzz, um, uh, Gloria, <laughs> uh, uh, that it is helpful to be able to read up the neck. Well, who was that that asked about that? Um, but yeah, I think it was Gloria. Um, and uh, that will um, uh, that will help, you know, that will be more useful. I think that's, like I said, generally when I'm reading music in a session or in any scenario, I'm rarely using open search unless I'm playing like bluegrass or something. Or, you know, sometimes when I'm doing blues and E or something, I'll, I'll, there'll be open strings that I want to utilize. But yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, no, the website doesn't charge anything. You just, it's just, you just print the page. So it's totally free. All you do is you just print whatever, you design whatever you want. Uh, let's see if I look at that page because it if at first glance you just start clicking around and you can figure it out um, let's see you can add treble clef yeah you just click on a treble clef you get some different varieties that's I don't know what that is Line, maybe that's for lyrics or something if I, I can do bass clef um, I can do tab and then you can you can also control the size. The arrows in and the arrows out control the size, which is really cool. Um, what does this do? Oh, that just gives you extra stuff. So yeah, th there's no... You can even change it to portrait and things like that. Uh, there's even weird clefts. Movable C clef. Yeah, it's... In fact, how do you do... Move? Oh yeah, it moves... Okay, you know, pretty much two places. So yeah, it's a great little website. Oh, Eurochamp football's on. Uh oh, I'm, I got competition. I could create. I could create a little field, like, uh, and then do kick, kick two fingers playing each other. Hey, Bob Schumann. Yes, we are moving to Mondays. Oh, you know what? Of course, it's too late now. I should have put. I, I should have put it last week. I should have put. Moving to Mondays. Um, why didn't somebody, did somebody tell me to do that and I just didn't see it? This is right. Okay. <laughs> little teeny tiny reminder right there. Let's see. And I got that. Make it a little bit bigger. I can make this smaller. Make this a little bigger. Make something like that. It was on Discord, yeah, it was on Discord. And I think I posted it on my Facebook channel as well. Um, I didn't post it on Twitter or YouTube community. I don't know if anybody really sees YouTube community. So I'm gonna stop because I've gotta get back to work, but we've got, um, oh, the, oh, this was, pfft. this is not, okay, yeah, perfect timing because he's uploading the new queue now. So that's what I gotta work on, okay. Uh, can I copy and paste this? What happens if I... Uh, so go on, copy. I should put it on the, today's lesson. Here's today's lesson. Oh, wait. Is it right here? Here, I think this is it. Yep. Cool. So I didn't name it, but this works. Okay. So anyone watching this later can see the new time. So we'll probably have a bunch of people do that. They'll probably tune in Wednesday and to, to watch. So I've got to get back to work, but here's the, so the new lessons up at the, the PDF is there. I'll try to start working on the E string and try to get that up early. 
Um, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. We might be just an E string, A string kind of um, uh, um, kind of the A string and the E string, the ledger line thing. So it'll be a lot of ledger lines in that lesson, okay? So it'll be good for you. And then, um, oh, nice, playing with your collider pedal. Very cool. Oh, Father's Day. Oh, nice. Hey, Steve Barry, good to see you, man. I'm just signing off. We'll see you. Um, I'll see you on next Monday, unless I can. I don't know. Holly will talk about doing a. Um, uh, yeah, Monday, Sunday night uh, Discord thing might be a good thing uh, to, to post on Discord that we're Monday. Um, but we need to do another uh, Zoom chat thing. So we'll, I'll set that up. I'll create one and then we'll put it in. Um, it seemed to work last time fine. I'll put it in the Discord and we can all kind of hang out for maybe an hour. No, I think, what is it, 30 minutes I'm limited to? So um, unless somebody's got a pro account and they want to host, <laughs> we could do that. Um, but anyway, the other thing is, um, and then maybe Alex and I, I don't think Alex is going to be here this week. So, but maybe Sunday he and I can get online and we can do a little uh, jam. I was going to do a jazz thing yesterday. I just totally forgot. Well, actually, everybody came over for Father's Day and I had to work. <laughs> so I'm in here in my studio working and everybody's hanging out. But that was fun. That's one of my favorite things to do is do what I do. So anyway, God bless you all. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Sorry you're late. That's all right, Steve. Don't worry about it. You can watch this. Go, <coughs> go back and watch it. I got to kill a fly. That's going to be my priority and download some tracks that I got to add some stuff to. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.